know, being back, practicing, and just how this offense obviously fits a lot of your skill set. Um, yeah. um, oh, hold on a second. Well, you know what? We're having an issue with the audio on Chris's. Why don't you uh, have him use my phone in my office? Got a little audio trouble, so I'm just have Chris sit down here and do it. There, yeah, it should be better. Yep, you can just look it right there. Yeah. You want to start again and just kind of talk about what it's what it's like to be back playing football and you know basically how this offense kind of fits your skill set. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm happy to be back, and um, it's a tough year off. That I had um, just mentally and 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 just everything. So um, yeah, this offense is um, more of like what I did when I was in high school. So I would say it fit me a little better. Um, but whatever offense, whatever plays that, that that we run, no matter what they are, if they fit me or not, I kind of gotta gotta kind of gotta make it work. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what I've been doing uh, at the beginning of my career here. Um, so, yeah. You guys have any questions, make sure to uh, um, put them in the chat function and we'll get, get you to Chris. Start with Orion. Hey, um, just wanted to ask, you know, how the offense has been utilizing you currently. You know, what type of role do you see yourself having when you guys do return to the field, and you know, what type of plays have they been using you on? What'd you say? Just, I'm, I'm wondering how the offense has currently utilized you so far. You know, how do you see yourself playing on the field in this offense? Uh, um, the offense is offense is good. We got a lot of different plays and a lot of you know what I'm saying a lot of different sets and stuff like that. And and as far as where I see myself at, I'm wherever wherever they need me at, whatever we're gonna put the team in the best situation. I guess if I could follow up quickly. You know, how has your role changed between now and and previously in your career here? Uh, I don't know. We haven't played any games yet, so I honestly don't know. It's, everybody's really just rip, ripping the offenses, ripping the offense out, and just finding their niche. I don't really, I don't really know exactly what my role is exactly because we haven't, you know I mean, prepared for a game yet. Next question is from Angelique. Chris, you mentioned how to help. Uh, the year was mentally. Can you describe that in a little bit more detail, please? Um, um, I was at like a um, mentally it was tough. Um, not knowing like if you're ever gonna be able to play football again at Michigan. Um, that was kind of like the big, like the the big question as I got closer to the uh, to the to the end of the school year. In like November, and then I got the good news. So I pretty much went the whole year without 100% knowing if I was coming back or not. Uh, like, and it wasn't my it wasn't my choice. It was the um, just Coach Harbaugh's and the school that was gonna let me back in, and if I was gonna be back on scholarship. So that that question was um, like the biggest one. So I was just sticking to what I knew and just just was grinding the whole time. If I could follow up also, Josh Uche at the uh, Combine, um, Chris, he said that, you know, you you worked several jobs, you painted houses, you were, you know, you were living with them, you didn't know, and, and he was so impressed with how you handled it. Uh, are you impressed with how you handled it, and, and how many jobs did you work? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm impressed on how I handled it. I feel like I would have handled any situation like that. Um, 
But <clears throat> I was the um, uh, special teams uh, coordinator at uh, Ann Arbor Huron last year when they won their first game uh, in six, five, six years, whatever. They won their first game. Uh, that was big. And uh, I was um, a carpenter, um, putting carpets down, and I was uh, mud and stuff, like drywall, drywall and stuff like that for different various places. Um, like in the south, I was like an assistant, and then I um, I uh, was the delivery driver and uh, and washed dishes at uh, almost heroes downtown Ann Arbor. So those are my three jobs. I worked the carpenter in the morning to like noon, and then was the um, uh, delivery drive for about four hours, and then all all on the weekends, and then at the, in the afternoons I uh, was at the high school um, coach. So our next question is from David Woodward. Hi, Chris, this is David Woodruff from Wolverine Sports TV. Um, as far as the team goes, some of the goals would include a Big Ten championship and obvious, obviously competing for a national championship. But I was wondering what individual goals you had personally for this upcoming season. Uh, um, just just um, prove I'm a different player, um, different player than I was back in 18. Um, that's probably one of my big biggest goals, no, nothing statistically wise or nothing like that, just kind of finding, finding my role and trusting in the coaches, trusting in my teammates because all the other accolades and stuff will come um, on their own. So, so yeah. Next question is from Ryan Zook. Hey, Chris, how much football did you watch last year? And was there any players or running backs in particular you, you kind of really had your eye on? You talking about college? Yeah, or college, NFL, regardless. Uh, I watched uh, I watched all the Michigan games, of course. And uh, I watched Clyde. I watched him, um, you know what I'm saying, his season. And when they won the national championship and uh, – Saquon and you know what I'm saying as much stuff I could much football I could watch um you know what I mean to, to keep me in the game uh at, at the high level game instead of like at the high school but other than that I just just watch those those guys next question is from Zach Sean hey Chris thanks for the time um I'm curious, you know, you mentioned the mental challenges. Did you ever consider going to another school or just going pro? And then I guess, why did you ultimately decide to uh, take the year off, take the, take the opportunity to stay at Michigan? Uh, no, I never thought of uh, going anywhere else. I mean, uh, just, I mean, if I, I didn't, I didn't a hundred percent know I was coming back to Michigan. So, that, that went through my head once or twice before, but like Michigan is those, they will be champions. And I, I just stuck to that and, and, and that's what I did. Next question is from Aria. Uh, hi, Chris. Um, do you think that working as a special teams coordinator for Huron improved, you know, your football skills at all for whenever you're able to get um, get back on the field and like kind of what was that experience like working with like in more of a coaching role? Uh, it was good. Um, me, my, my position coach being a special teams coordinator here, uh, really like it brought light to what with the whole situation of like when we was doing stuff that like I learned, you know what I mean, at Michigan as far as on special teams. So I just took that over there and I just kind of seen the game from a different, different viewpoint. And I kind of like felt, um, kind of felt like, you know, like some some I, there were some older high school coaches on the on the um, staff that like like wish they could play football again, like you know what I mean? I was trying to hype kids up and trying to get them going, you know what I mean? Because they they knew that they couldn't play again, and I kind of watched that and was like, dang, I, I get the luxury to be able to might be able to play again, so I'm gonna make sure that when I get my opportunity, I'm gonna make make the most of it. Next question is from Austin. 
Hey, Chris, thanks for doing this. Uh, can you just describe the emotion of, of having to be patient and waiting for your opportunity to come back and then getting back and having the COVID thing happen and now things being shut down again? How difficult was it to sort of go through that spectrum of emotions? Uh, life, life is all about patience. Um, you got to be patient. Things will come to you. Um, you know what I'm saying? And just, just working it out, grinding. If you just keep working hard and just trust in the process, um, everything will come together. Next question is from Rainer. Yeah, I know one NFL scouting service has you uh, ranked pretty high. I mean, uh, was there any kind of debate about whether to come back um, this season and how has the Big Ten postponement uh, changed your thinking about, you know, whether to play, not to play, how, how have you approached that decision, uh, especially as it relates to your pro prospects? Uh, I ain't really looked into, I ain't really even looked into all that stuff. Um, Cause like all that stuff is just like, really what somebody thinks it really comes down to, you know what I mean? With the, with the NFL scouts and stuff, thinking like that. But I ain't never thought about um, doing anything different. I'm just 100% focused on playing football and, and Whatever else comes is, 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 I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Next question is from Isaiah. Hey, Chris, you said that you uh, watched every Michigan game. What were your impressions watching uh, Zach and Hassan? And uh, what have you seen from them uh, since you've returned to the team and practice? And how much, especially Hassan, how much has he evolved since uh, you were first, uh, for, since he first came to campus? Uh, they they both evolved really well. Uh, I mean, Hassan evolved, evolved really well. I ain't really get to Zach. Zach's first year was here um, when I got suspended. So, um, just Zach, just like the maturity and the pass protections and knowing who who to block. My freshman year, I really it was kind of every, everything was was like Chinese as far as uh, who to block and when to block and what to do. Um, and Hassan is um, he's getting better every day. He's working harder in practice. This COVID stuff really kind of get you off course, um, but you just got to stay locked in, and that's what you've been doing. Everybody's been doing that. Our next question is from Ethan. Uh, Chris, just to um, kind of build on what Isaiah asked a little bit, um, when you watched Michigan games last year, um, what, were you watching from the stands, from home? Uh, like, kind of where where were you, and and what was it like to to have that you know separation from the team and and watch and be watching them. Uh, I was working on the um, I was at Amos on the weekend, so uh, if it's a noon game or whatever, pretty much if it's on a Saturday, I was in there and uh, uh, it'll be on the TV and and Amos the only TV in there, and I will watch the game while we like while I'm waiting for another delivery to go take. So I really can't catch all of the game if it's a, if it's busy, but if it ain't, I just sit there and watch and like. Yeah, so. We got time for a couple more questions with Chris. Um, we have Theo's next. Yeah, Chris, just off building off some of the questions from earlier, um, how was you, your approach different in this offense compared to, you know, in the offenses that you played in earlier in your Michigan career that were, you know, kind of different from what you had in high school? Uh, I mean, the, um, the approach is, is pretty much the same mentally. Um, we don't really get in, like like I said, we don't really get into the big tight end and fullback sets. It's it's, it's kind of more spread out in some regards. So you know what I'm saying? It's just a little bit, a little bit less moving parts. So you know what I mean? So that's the only the only way. Is does that change anything for you personally in terms of how you you know approach you know approach practices and approach you know every play? Uh, no, it don't change nothing me mentally. I'm just taking it day by day and just trying to attack every area if I get. Our last question for Chris is from Ashley. Hey, Chris, I'm just curious. I know they announced you were going to be reinstated during the season last year. So what, what was that like for you when you found out you were going to be able to come back? Can you, like, who did you talk to? Was it Coach Harbaugh kind of uh, go through what it was like actually finding out and having those conversations? Yeah, when I first found out, uh, I talked to Coach Harbaugh, and he uh, he said, "All right, we're about to get you starting to work out with Coach Hurd." 
And I was working on Coach Herb since the time I got it reinstated until the first of when we came back um, after the after the bowl game. So ever since then, ever since I got the news, I was I was I quit my job instantly, put my two week in, and uh, and uh, just hit the ground running. Awesome. Well, we thank you, Chris. Appreciate you doing sure. this today. I know we got um, Brad Hawkins ready. So appreciate thanks, Chris. Appreciate your water. Oh, yeah. Thanks. So I know we got Brad Hawkins here. Um, I think somewhere. Brad, you out there? Yeah, I'm right here. All right. Awesome. May want to turn your uh, phone a little. You'll, you're sideways. Like this? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Appreciate, appreciate you taking time today. Um, and uh, we'll just get started. So um, if you guys have questions for Brad, um, just put them in the queue and I'll call it, call on you as you get started. But um, why don't we start with Brad kind of talk about um, maybe how you've probably become one of the bigger leaders on the defense being a senior this year. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, coming a, a leader on this defense, you know, it means a lot to me. Um, you know, just coming into this year, I know um, I was going to play a big role um, in the secondary and in the defense period. You know, just being a senior and being the leader, you know, I playing a lot and just, you know, knowing what's going on. So, you know, that, that role has, um, you know, helped me a lot, you know, just growing as a person and as a man and, you know, for the future and, you know, every aspect um, as my life. Um, you know, just being a leader and, you know, something like that is, is something that means a lot to me, you know, just helping other guys, you know, become better at uh, what they do, so. Um, our first question is from Aaron McMahon. Hey, Brad, thanks for doing this. Um, with, with Ambry announcing that he's going to go to the draft, who do you see as the next uh, corner kind of stepping up uh, to play next to Vincent Gray? And, and who, So who do, you, who do you think is the next guy up? Um, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of guys. Um, you got uh, Jeremy Green, you got DJ, you got Jalen Perry, um, you know. So there's a lot of guys that are stepping up. There's a lot of guys that is filling that role, um, you know. Uh, you know, during this time, you know, of course, all those guys are getting better. Um, you know, everybody, you know, has to step up because, you know, you have people opting out in, you know, different situations. So, you know, those guys are some guys that's definitely stepping up and, you know, looking good right now, so. Next question is uh, Aria. Um, Brad, I, I saw a tweet from Quiddy last night that, uh, you know, they're getting the whole team registered to vote. So, you know, how has that been, you know, how, how has the team been working to like emphasize voting and re voter registration? Um, I mean, it was just something that, you know, everybody, you know, you know, as a, you know, as a world and, you know, we have to take on, you know, vote and, you know, just change the world and make it a better place. And, you know, that's just something that, you know, you know, we preach on at the university, you know, just staying together and just being a family. So that's definitely something that um, that was definitely helpful for us. And we took pride in, you know, everybody getting registered to the vote and, you know, just make the world a better place. Next question is from Ashley. Hey, Brad, thanks for doing this. I'm curious from a year ago, how have you seen Dax kind of grow? And what do you think with Josh gone, gone now? Uh, that you two do well together on the field in the unit? Um, you know, he's growing as a player. Um, you know, he got a lot bigger, you know, a lot stronger, you know, a lot smarter. Um, so, you know, he's definitely a guy, you know, to watch out for, of course. Um, you know, seeing what he'd done previous previous year, last year, um, you know, he's had, he had a good year. Um, he stepped up, um, you know, in a lot of big games for us. And, you know, looking forward to that uh, with him. And, uh, you know, he's growing every single day. Um, he's looking real good. Um, so, you know, both of us do a very good, well job communicating with each other. Um, I feel like we both um, cover very well. So, you know, that's something that can, you know, versatility with both of us being back there, you know, playing, you know, free safety rover really doesn't matter between both of us. We can go in between. So, you know, having him back there is definitely, you know, something that, you know, helps me out a lot. And, you know, with his, with his athleticism and, you know, you know, his smarts and so and his speed, definitely helps a lot. And then with Coach Partridge gone now too, I'm wondering what's it been like getting to know Coach Shoup and work with him, especially uh, with all this COVID stuff where you guys were away from campus for so much of the off season? 
Um, you know, getting to know Coach Shoup, you know, Coach Shoup's a great guy, um, great coach, uh, even better person. Um, he knows a lot of football. You know, he's been, he been around it, the game a, a long time. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just happy to learn from a, a new guy and learn new things from a new person. And, you know, this is just something that, you know, helped me elevate my game. You know, he's been around, a, you know, a lot of great safeties. You know, he coached um, Adrian Amos. Um, so he coached some great guys. And, you know, I'm happy to be with him. I'm happy to be around him. I'm happy to learn from him. Our next question is from David Woodruff. Hey, Brad. This is David. Um, I wanted to ask, there's lots of kind of uncertainty and conflicting reports regarding the college football season as to when it will happen, if it will happen. I was just wondering what the mood has been like in the locker room and what kind of the feeling is uh, around everyone uh, regarding um, the, the playing of football at all. Um, you know, uh, with us, you know, um... Every day, you know, we go on the sim, you know, we work hard, uh, whether it's, you know, weight training or, you know, doing things on the field. But, you know, the approach we have been is just trying to get better every day. Um, you know, whenever our number's called, uh, we're going to be ready. You know, whenever it's time to play, whether it's next month, January, next year, we will be ready. Um, you know, we just preparing every day, you know, preparing every day, um, you know, ready to play and, you know, hoping our, um, hoping they, you know, overturn this thing and give us the opportunity to go out there and show what we got. Thanks. Next, next question is from Rainer. Uh, Brad, for, for a lot of guys, um, yourself included, this is a big year as far as, uh, you know, the NFL is concerned. I mean, is there a lot of talk, I guess, amongst, uh, you know, teammates in the locker room about, you know, what this, what this could mean uh, for you guys if you, if you don't get to play this fall and, you know, the, uh, the complications that are involved in having a spring season and how that relates to the NFL for you guys? Um, you know, of course, there's a lot of things, you know, up in the air, uh, you know, with this COVID thing going on. But, um, you know, we really haven't, you know, guys haven't really, you know, talked about it much each other. Um, you know, like I said, we just, you know, going there every day with the mindset like that we are playing and, you know, we're ready to go. And, um, you know, whenever we are um, called to play, we will be ready to go. So, you know, it hasn't really been anything, you know, looking towards, you know, NFL or anything like that. You know, we just, you know, trying to, you know, win this Big Ten championship right now and, you know, hoping that, you know, we get an opportunity. So. Uh, to just to follow up, is there any kind of frustration, though, that, I mean, some of these other, uh, you know, conferences are playing, and so they get the opportunity to get additional game tape, additional chances to show to uh, scouts and uh, executives at the NFL their, you know, uh, the improvement they made during the offseason, whereas you guys don't really have that opportunity? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, There's definitely some frustration, you know, seeing other guys, you know, seeing friends of mine. Uh, play at other schools and get the opportunity to go out there and play and you know we just watching and we're not you know getting the opportunity to go out there and play but um you know there's nothing um that we can do about it but just you know keep going every day and just you know hoping they you know overturn it and give us an opportunity but um yeah it's definitely frustrating you know but there's really not much you know we could do about it but so Thanks. our next our next question is from Orion. Hey, Brad, thanks for doing this. I just wanted to follow up on the previous question. Um, after the Big Ten announced the postponement, did you yourself consider to go to the NFL at all? Um, was that something that you had to think about for a while? Um, honestly, no. Um, I haven't really, you know, sat down, you know, thought about, you know, the NFL or anything like that. Um, so I'm just, you know, like I said, me personally, I'm just, you know, working on what I need to work on every day to become a better player. Um, so. You know, I haven't really sat down and really thought, thought about that uh, right now. You know, it's still early. It's still, you know, a lot of uncertainty in the air. So, you know, right now my mind is all on, you know, Michigan football. And so just trying to, you know, get my opportunity, you know, my last year to play with these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, hypothetically speaking, you know, if, if you guys don't play until next fall, what do you think you would do in that situation? Um, honestly, I don't know. No, um, you know, I want to come back. You know, I want to uh, play another year here at the university. Um, of course, there's a lot of things that can change. There's a lot of things, you know, up in the air, you know, with this going on. So, but, you know, I want to come back, you know, um, 
and play with these guys, you know, and uh, hopefully, you know, I'll get the opportunity. Next question is from Zach Shaw. Hey, Brad, thanks for the time. I, I don't know if you were able to listen to much of Chris Evans' interview with us, but, you know, he talked about he was working different jobs and um, didn't know he would be able to come back to Michigan. So I guess what was your view of his year away from the program, and then what, what do you think it says to – to the team and, and his teammates that he stuck it out and actually came back to Michigan? Um, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, Chris is a, is a great guy. You know, he works hard, you know, he uh, has his mind on straight. You know, we all know he's a great guy. We all know he's a great football player. And, you know, just the, the mental toughness that he had, um, you know, being away from the team for a year and, you know, just mentally getting his mind right, mentally doing the things that he had to do. And then coming back this year and, you know, being the leader, you know, um, stepping up and, you know, doing the right things, helping the guys. And that, I just that, – that says a lot about him as a person, the character that he has. So, you know, he's definitely a great guy, definitely, you know, somebody that, um, you know, I look up to. So, um, yeah, he's, he's somebody that, you know, great guy. Next question is from Angelique. Fred, um – Back at the the combine, Cesar Ruiz was asked who he thought on this team this year, this Michigan team, would be a surprise or really catch people's eye. And he said it would be you, and he didn't understand why people weren't talking about you more. Do you feel like you you're prime for that kind of season? And and do you think you're also a little bit under the radar? Uh, yes, I believe so. You know, I've been working very very hard. You know, this off season, um, working on my craft, working on my speed, working on everything. You know, that I need to work on to become the best. Um, so, yes, I definitely think that um, I'm underrated, and I think that, um, you know, I got a lot to show, and I know that um, I got a lot to show, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm better than what, you know, I put on fam, and, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, I have to prove as a player, um, you know, so it's just, I just got to go out there and do it at this point. That's all it really is. Our next question is from Ryan Zook. Hey, Brad, I know you guys haven't had, had an outbreak or anything yet, but take me through what, what's your thought process when you see schools like, like Wisconsin having to shut down workouts or, or like the Baylor game being canceled, knowing that, I mean, possibly that could be playing a factor in you guys being able to get back on the field and, and seeing and playing football this, this fall or, or in 2020. Um, I mean, you know, seeing those things, um, some games postponed, and then, you know, like you said, seeing that uh, Wisconsin had an outbreak, um, you know, sometimes, you know, um, running through our minds, definitely we think, oh, there's is, is no way this, this thing is going to happen, you know. And then it's sometimes it's like, oh, you know, we're going to have a season. So, like, I, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, you know, every week is something new. Um, but, you know, like just seeing things like that, definitely, you know, have a, have a uh, you know, thing in your mind, thinking that, you know, it's not, it's not going to happen. But, you know, you can't think like that. You got to just keep going. Uh, we knew, you know, you know, uh, with this going on, Things are going to happen like that. Outbursts are going to happen. You know, people are going to be opted out. But, you know, it's still a chance for this to happen. And we just got to be ready for it. We're going to cut off questions now. We've got about three left for Brad. Um, next one is from Austin. Yeah, Brad, just to follow up on that, can you describe what your protocols uh, have been like? How difficult is it to, to stick to those all the time? How different is life right now compared to what you typically would be doing on campus? Uh, of course, it's very different. Um, you know, virtu of course, like virtual classes, uh, you know, nobody used to having classes online, we used to be in class. Um, that's something that's very different. Um, you know, wearing a mask all day, um, that's something that's, of course, very different. Um, you know, just out there, you know, football field with a shield on, um, you know, that's something different that you got to adapt to. Um, you know, of course, there's a, there's a lot of things that's that's different during this, uh, during this COVID um so, I mean, you know, you have to adapt to it, um, so. Did you have a follow-up there, Austin, or you good? Okay. Next question, Angelique. Brad, just wondering if from your vantage in practice, can you evaluate um, the quarterbacks, McCaffrey and Milton at this stage? Um, both are doing a great job. Uh, you know, they both have um, – both have a great skill set. Uh, both, uh, you know, can throw the ball well. Both can run the ball well. Um, you know, those guys right there is, is definitely a, you know, good competition. Um, you know, you still got um, Kalen McNamara. He's doing a great job as well. 
Um, so all three of those guys are doing a great job, um, you know. So I'm just looking forward to, you know, still, you know, looking at the competition from those three guys and, you know, just seeing the things that they do and, you know, just growing, you know, as quarterbacks and, you know, as young men. So you, you mentioned the things they, they do. Can you sort of separate maybe the things that, that Milton does better than McCaffrey and vice versa? Um, I mean, I mean, they're both great quarterbacks. It's not really uh, nothing that I can really think of right now that separates, you know, uh, both of them. Um, like I said, they're both, you know, great quarterbacks. Of course, I don't, you know, see everything they do being on the defensive side of the ball. So from what I see, you know, just playing against those guys, um, uh, seeing what they do, they're both for, you know, doing a great job. And, you know, I can't, I don't really have anything that separates, you know, the two of them right now. So. Last question is from Aaron. Brad, you, you mentioned working hard over the summer to kind of keep yourself uh, ready. Um, what were some of the things you maybe focused on to, to kind of keep your skills sharp and, and to keep you, you know, um, ready to play this fall? Um, you know, just focusing more on my speed and, you know, uh, staying in shape and, you know, my lean body mass, uh, just working on things like that, um, improving my speed, you know, to just become, uh, faster, you know, a better defensive back, versatile. Um, feel like I could play all three positions, um, outside linebacker, safety, corner. So, I mean, just trying to, you know, uh, being that guy um, and, and being back there, you know, being versatile and, you know, uh, coming up and, you know, being strong enough to be in the box, but fast enough to play, you know, safety and, you know, quick enough to cover a receiver on the outside. So that's just what I, you know, you know, pride myself in and just, you know, getting better at doing those things and just working on my speed and just becoming a better uh, defensive back and just a versatile player. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Brad, especially. I uh, appreciate you taking appreciate the time you. out of your schedule today. And um, I will uh, hope everyone has a good weekend and we'll see you later on. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Dave.